Welcome back to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa, time for Off the Press. Chris Kende Wandu is a chartered mediator and a, consul a consulator. Uh, it's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning, my great people. I hope you are good. Yes, yes. And how, welcome. Are, you, and how are you coping with the fuel? Well, we, we don't have a choice. <laughs> we don't have a choice. <laughs> you, you, sometimes you leave the car at home and you, you get into a taxi or use a motorcycle. You know, other than, other than that, you have to spend, you know, the night in the queue. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's nice to be with you this morning. Yes. How is it over at your end with the fuel uh, situation? It's so terrible, my brother. We have to resort to buying a black market hmm. because I don't think I have the time to queue for three, four, five hours uh, for fuel. And that's the situation we find ourselves this time. It's quite unfortunate. All right, Chris Wandu, let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper this morning. Uh, looking at the Guardian newspaper, the banner caption reads, Huddles as Nigerian companies take over IOC's onshore asset. And that's what you find underneath. $105 billion oil gas decommissioning in Nigeria. Others create consent. Shell Oxygen Mobile orders to sell over $27 billion asset. Worries over weak infrastructure or legal battle amid energy transition. Now, now you also have fourth, Ekiti Monarch escapes kidnapping and death by whiskers. The tragic Abakari case is an editorial. I'm sure you might just be interested. Cool's poverty must be dealt with for Africa to grow, says Vice President Yemil Sibadro. And just there, again, underneath, you find evacuation of Nigerians in Ukraine begins tomorrow. And NPC gives OICS condition for divestment from Nigeria. Uh, that's also another issue that, you know, we need to pay attention to. But that's it on the Guardian newspaper this morning. All right, let's move over to the Daily Independent on Tuesday uh, with these uh, headlines. The lead one there. Governor's minister protests against draft electricity bill. It's illegal to treat Federation as a single electricity jurisdiction, governors. Minister says provisions diminished powers of his office as coordinator. So both of them are crying <laughs> that they do not have enough power in the power sector, that's interesting. More stories from the Independent, the Daily Independence. Miss flight, airpiece to meet with a mayor of Kanu soon. That's coming from Alan Oyema of airpiece. Some Nigerians trapped in Ukraine are not willing to return. Minister, FG begins evacuation of stranded Nigerians tomorrow. NNPC gives IOC's conditions for divestment from Nigeria. They must address abandonment, decommissioning of oil assets, Medicare. Can he please tell us about when the fuel scarcity will end? I think that's what Nigerians will be interested in seeing on the front pages of the papers. Terrorists on rampage in Niger abduct construction workers. Details on page six. Really sad one there. Um, constitutional amendment. NLC vows to shame lawmakers who vote against local government autonomy wants autonomy for judiciary state legislators all right i think they are they're talking a bit more about national issues now um nuns to block federal roads in southwest if also continues strike uh we'll take chris's chris's thoughts on that messy you know what i think zenith bank surpasses market expectations with double digit growth in gross earnings and ukraine seeks to join eu as round of talks with russia ends Energy giant Shell to end partnership with Russia's Gazprom. Those are the headlines on the front page of the Daily Independent. Away from the Daily Independent, we, we take a quick look at the Punch newspaper uh, this morning. And looking at the front page, it says, Ukraine and Russian war, federal government to early 2000 Nigerians. Evacuation begins Wednesday, that's tomorrow. Buhari approves funding as federal government tips Air Peace and Max Air. Uh, four or five aeroplanes to evacuate Nigerian refugees. That's what the federal government is saying. Well, that's it. You also have fuel scarcity. NETTI blames subsidy and X depot price hits 180 naira per liter. Minister walks out on student protesting as a strike. Quite interesting. 
Nigerians 993.38 billion naira input from Russia reeks over war. Uh, that's also another caption there. And just before we move away, Sands reject immunity for Chief Georges of Nigeria and National Assembly uh, votes today. You also have suspected kidnapper shoot Ekiti Monak, resident laments government in action. Nigeria Bennett to resolve dispute over oil rich uh, island. Uh, find out what that's about this morning on uh, the Punch newspaper. And another one says, court gives Abakari go ahead to treat diabetes and others. I see, but he's still in detention. <laughs> they, they refuse to give him or approve his application for bail. Uh, we have uh, headlines coming on the front page of uh, the nation. The lead one there. Worsening petrol scarcity cripples cities, businesses. Lagos, Abuja, Ibadan, Oshobo, West Hit. TUC Mall's industrial action. I uh, wonder that, whether that will help or make things worse. Uh, they also have analysis of the electoral act in the Punch newspaper, in the nation rather, a newspaper today. You can check out the inside pages for that. More from that paper. INEC OKs 18 parties for 2023 elections. INEC OKs 18 parties for 2023 election. They're saying no more registration. Details on page three. Russia-Ukraine war, evacuation of Nigerians begins tomorrow. Zenit Bank makes 765.6 billion naira full year gross earnings. Governors, ministers reject proposed power bill. That's an unrelated headline there. Uh, Rao in APC over convention panel. There they go again with the following writers. State chairman protest PDP men on withdrawn lists. Uh, what IOCs must do before divesting from Nigeria by the NNPC. Um, last one from the Nation newspaper. Vandalized track derailed Lagos Kano train, says NRC and government. Government kill uh, 15 in Bono. Headlines from the Nation newspaper. Well, there's so much we can take at this point in time. Uh, let's have Chris Wandu uh, share his thoughts this morning. Chris, it's good to have you join us. Thank you once again for having me. All right, so Chris, let's start on this note. Uh, which of the headlines interests you? Well, uh, let me, let's start internationally. Uh, evacuation of Nigerians or Nigerians in Ukraine. Um, the federal government said that evacuation is to start uh, on Wednesday. Um, to me, this is coming too late. We are not proactive enough. If we have done the needful, then by now we're supposed to have make sure that most of our citizens in uh, Ukraine were pulled out before the war. Don't forget that the Americans have been warning about this war for weeks and saying that um, Putin was going to um, invade um, Ukraine. But uh, most governments of the world, especially Nigeria government, probably didn't believe that it would happen. Now it has happened. If you are going to evacuate, you can only evacuate Nigerians that are finding themselves within the free countries uh, surrounding Ukraine, talking of Poland, uh, probably uh, Hungary, um, some other countries. But those that are already trapped, how do you evacuate them? And that is the problem for me. And I believe that this has happened time and time again. We, uh, if you remember what happened in South Africa, the, the, the problem which we have with South Africa, where Nigerians were killed in their tents, it took only the effort of one man, uh, one um, uh, the owner of APs, um, uh, Onyema, to be able to pull the north out of the empire and send the, an aircraft to South Africa and uh, brought in some Nigerians. But um, we realized that our government will always play the second fiddle or play uh, second level when it comes to You must have seen so many uh, videos going on, uh, on online. You saw what, what the Indians did with their uh, citizens and so many other countries. And the most annoying part for me now is that it's not only to say, they say that we're going to pull ourselves out. It's the fact that most Nigerians who find themselves at the border that have been restricted, they are restricted from crossing the border because of, because of those people coming in. We are black people who saw the discrimination against black people. So we are inside the trains and they were pulled out by Ukrainian um, police and security agencies. The blacks are not given enough um, room to move out of the country, just like other other people. And that is what, and the second one also is that uh, most often, are not to realize that even Ukraine, it is only the women 
and the uh, children that have been allowed to live. Most men um, don't find their way out. So, but I think that would have been more proactive than this. But it's always better than late than never. Uh, if we are sending place to these countries, as I said, it's only those that are ready to make it across the border. There are so many other Nigerians that have been trapped in Ukraine, and it is uh, our prayer that uh, nothing will happen to them. But I think we would have been more proactive uh, in, in getting this done. This is a big lesson to Nigeria uh, government, so that anytime you have anything of this nature, let us try as much as possible to be proactive and ask. It, it is only those that say they are not willing to give by can be left, but let us try to be proactive and make sure that we pull out our our citizens from most of these countries before uh, before this okay. issue, uh, the crisis get to a point where we cannot do anything again. All right, uh, thank you, Chris uh, Owandu. Um, we have uh, on the front page of the Nation newspaper worsening petrol scarcity cripples cities and businesses, and we had a little banter about that before we began this segment. Uh, uh, moving on from that front page of the Nation newspaper, we look at. Um, the, the front page of The Guardian where the NMPCs, or NMPCs given IOC's conditions for divestment from Nigeria. Of course, um, some Nigerian billionaires buying the, the wells of uh, uh, the oil mine, mining leases of these, um, uh, the, these IOCs like Mobile and Co. Uh, and then on the front page of the uh, Punch newspaper, Nigerian Benin uh, to resolve dispute over oil rich uh, Tungegi Island. Um, so we have more oil but no fuel or less fuel. What, is your, what are your thoughts on what's going on right now? First and foremost, the headline of the, the guy there and the authors of Nigeria companies take over IOC's onshore assets. Um, Kofi, uh, that's a serious uh, indictment on, on us that the IOC's uh, uh, are leaving. Most of the oil companies, foreign oil companies are leaving Nigeria. And what is the cause? It's probably because the environment is not conducive for them economically for them to be able to grow. So, and so what they are doing is to sell out their assets and just leave. And that in itself leaves us in a very, very terrible situation because they are going to lose a lot of uh, foreign expertise. They are going to lose a lot of investment. Yes, Nigerian companies can buy and take over. But in policy, uh, we have handled so many of our assets that are owned by Nigerians or Nigerian government. And that, to me, is a very, very terrible. Then the issue of, of, um, of well, well, I'll tell you, um, uh, Kofi, as we discussed earlier, uh, I was able to get uh, a meter of oil for 200 Naira um, yesterday, uh, the black market. But I, I believe I was one of the lucky ones because there have been instances where a lot of people have not been able to get product. And wherever, even when they are, then you see a lot of queues in Lagos, a ton of Lagos area now. It has been on in Abuja for, for weeks now, and nothing has been done about it. And we will continue to ask, just like you rightly asked, what we should be seeing in the front page of papers on television stations like Plus TV and the rest of them in the news is that uh, NMPC have, uh, is telling us that within the next two, three days that this thing we have really, But it seems that they don't have a solution to the problem. And that brings us back to what our people like me have already said. These are issues that we, can, we would have avoided. It's avoided it's because of we don't have the capacity to be able to do the right thing, especially at the government level. A situation where we have to depend on, we, we're a country that exports um, crude and buy um, uh, refined uh, products from foreign countries, that becomes that is the challenge. We are the few, even not the only country in the world that does that. And uh, let me also tell you that. The crisis in Ukraine and uh, Russia is going to cause even more problems um, for us because you realize that the, it's going to escalate. Yeah, the, the prices of the crude will rise. We might be able to sell more, but that in itself is going to have a ripple effect on the imported um, petroleum. So if the prices go up. What does it mean? If we have done the right thing, we ought to have done since 2015 when this government let us. I, I, I've stopped blaming PDP for whatever they've done. This is a government that came to power with so much promises in 2015. We are seven years into this government, and most of the promises they made, one of them was that they're going to build new refineries and also a turnaround maintenance for all the old ones. But now, as we are talking, Mercy Kofi, there is no single refinery in Nigeria that is refining anything. And we sent billions and billions of naira for turnaround maintenance, and nothing has been turned around. And I thought that the uh, uh, 
um, graph agencies like ESCs and ICP ought to have been looking in that sector, but they're also not doing nothing. But this is where we find ourselves, and I don't know when this will stop. Uh, but let's really stay with, you know, the huddles as Nigerian companies take over the IOCs. I mean, the fact that these IOCs are divesting and it calls for a lot of concern. The global energy transition, the fact that there's a shift, it feels like it hasn't been we in Africa. Nigerians are not even thinking about this because what this practically means is there's going to be a shift from, you know, the demand of fossil fuel. And so... People, you know, the world countries and the entire world will be shifting to clean energy. Where does this leave us? For a country as Nigeria, where we're highly dependent on, I mean, if you look at our revenue base, we're very dependent on, you know, oil earnings for all that we do. Over 90%, if not more. So where does this really leave us? It doesn't even feel like the government is engaging. It doesn't even look like we're even considering. Rather, we're giving conditions to these international organizations and what have you. And we think that this, these instructions and you know conditions would deter them from leaving. That we eventually leave because there will be no need for oil. Yeah, you're talking of clean energy. Um, the world is moving on. Rather, you know. Why the world takes 10 steps forward, Nigeria is always taking 20 backwards. And that is where we find ourselves. The world has gone beyond just oil. The world is thinking a generation without oil. That is how the world is going. That is why you've seen so many advanced countries are now going into electric cars. I'm sure you are very well aware of that. And some of them have even put a time frame as to when to stop the use of um, cars, using petroleum. And that is what, that, where the world is. So the world is moving forward. But what are we talking about? Let's let me on the economical side. Let us even look at the issue of electric car. You are talking of clean energy. We cannot even satisfy our own electricity uh, 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 electricity in Nigeria. We are shopping between 4,000 and 5,000. And we are told that for us to be able to find ourselves in a position where we can be able to be energy, uh, 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 our electricity has to be um, um, it's sufficient. We are looking at about close to about 20, 20, 20 to 30,000. We are just shortly between us. What means is that even if you bring in electricity car into the, the country, how are you going to charge them? That is a, that is the issue. So, why this most of these IOCs are also doing this? Because they also have seen the long term um, um, uh, issue that come in the next few years. Or you may not just be the uh, the, the entity. Some of them are the first thing. Chris Wandu. Chris Wandu. My our concern here this morning is that we're not having any conversation surrounding this. It doesn't even feel like this is happening to us. I, I mean, for a country that is highly dependent on you know oil earnings for for whatever we do. I mean, look at our budget. We have to borrow to fund it. It means that if we are highly dependent on uh, the, the, you know, the, what accrues from, you know, oil earnings, then it means that if oil is taken, we do not have anything. I mean, there's nothing left for us. How do we now run the country? How do we now pay salaries? What do we now do? That's what I'm asking. Yeah. And how come the yeah, government yeah, is yeah, not talking not, about this? Yeah, We're not having not any conversation. I, just, I was going, just going to that. Uh, don't forget, it, it's not today we're talking about the issue of the representation of the economy. We have said it time and time again that dependent on oil um, as our sole foreign uh, exchange earner is going to hurt us very, very. And that is why I, when, at times when I see people laugh, I just say that, God, can you just let this oil dry up so that we can be more creative in going about our business? Because there are so many areas that we can look at. We are talking about agriculture. We are talking of area of mining. Look at, there's no state in Nigeria that does not have a, a, a product that we can look at and be able to arrange that we can export. Our oil palm is there. Um, there is coal. Um, there is steel in Jaws. There is gold. There are so many other things. We are so many other. A country like um, Dubai, UAE, they don't have oil. But they are one of the most developed countries in the world, and you ask yourself, where are they getting the money? We are not looking at IT. If you look at the first 10 billionaires in the world, the, the richest people in the world, I will tell you that about nine out of the 10 is from IT. Countries like India, countries like China, countries like so many other things are going into, are really taking serious effort. And it's not that we don't have the brain. We've seen so many instances where we see Nigerians who have the capacity in this area of IT, and we can make so much money from it. 
But what are we talking about every day? Uh, we exported uh, one, uh, uh, five million crude. We are waiting on uh, OPEC. And the most annoying part is that we also depend on I, um, OPEC because it is the quarter that, uh, that OPEC gives us that we will export. So if they sell, tell us cut to three million, we cut. We haven't and even been meeting. I mean, if you look at yeah, the report from we're December, we haven't yeah, even we're met the quarter. We're, we're not, not producing. The quarter, and that is issue. That is issue. We are not even meeting the quarter being given us. And that should be a challenge for us. Those are, should be the, uh, the, the conversation. But, but what is our government doing? They are practically doing nothing. They are saying nothing. They are not telling us what they are going to do. We will set up a, um, a, 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 a ministry uh, 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 for um, so many uh, uh, product, uh, product life. But none is working. And I continue asking myself, what is wrong with us? What is wrong with us as people? We are one of the most blessed countries in the world with so many human and um, uh, mineral resources to our bed. We see that we don't have the human And I bring this to leadership. I continue saying that our problem is that most often I ask the question, what is the problem? Is it the leadership or the people? And to me, I've come to the conclusion that our problem is not about the people, but the kind of leaders we have. The leaders that don't have vision, people, uh, leaders that cannot see beyond their nose, leaders that cannot see and follow the world trend and be able to get creative so that they can bring us out of this problem. But that is where we are. We are not taking that. And let me also tell you this. One of the reasons why we are having these challenges about petrol and pollution is that because so many people are making so much money out of it. Those in government are making money. And they know that if they refine these products locally, that they will not make those. So that is why they are making the, okay. the, the refineries that are not working. All right. Chris Kagan, I want to thank you. It's, it's a really a, 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 such a, a shame that um, the authorities, including Melikari himself, who's pictured on the front page of uh, The Guardian uh, with uh, some Arab you know, oil officials at uh, the National Energy Summit in Abuja, it's, it's not telling Nigerians anything about the the daily, you know, updates. They're not giving us updates. They're not giving us anything about uh, the situation of, of of things in the country. Well, let's let's hope for the best. But I think this probably you would agree that this is taking Nigerians for for granted. Um, let, let's look at the the strike situation. A couple of papers covered that today, uh, and um, we will look at what the a daily independent has it says nans to block roads or federal roads in southwest if asked to continue to strike and uh, we go to the nation the punch rather which says minister walks out of students protesting as to strike and please permit me to give a few lines from the punch's account it says that um students of tertiary institutions uh um, under the ages of the National Association of Nigerian Students of Mali protested in parts of the countries. We'll move on to that. Um, in Abuja, protesting students, to move on from that, protesting students grounded activities at the Federal Secretariat, uh, the Federal Minister of Education, after the Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, walked out of them on them during a meeting. Um, they were said to have gone to the National Assembly demanding to speak with the leadership of the National Assembly, uh, but security operatives on the ground shut the gate against them. The protesting students then decided to take their protest to the Ministry of Education and demanded to speak with the minister, a request that was uh, granted. Now, Mr. Wando, please listen to this line. A request that was granted. The minister actually allowed and accepted that they should come and speak to him. At the meeting with the minister, President of NANS, Sunday Ashefo, demanded an immediate end to the ongoing strike while negotiations continue. This is what he's telling, he's telling the, the Minister of Education. He, he demanded an, an end to the ongoing strike while negotiations continue. Not bad. But he also called for, uh, please underline this, the inclusion of students in the negotiating process. The inclusion of students in the negotiating process, threatening the students may ground activities nationwide as done during the NSAS protest. Uh, Mr. Wandu, um, I mean, I, I've, 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 we've covered such events ranging from NANS to NLC in particular, uh, and unions and all that. And we know what is going on, don't we? We do. We know what is going on. And uh, we, cannot be, we cannot pretend about it. As Riley said, we are all students. Um, we, we pass to good enough. Most of us pass to the university, not in the tech, so we know that. Uh, I was one of those that led the Aluta uh, in Lasso in 1986, when I was a, a student in Lasso, and I really during the period of uh, 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 of um, IBB, and that's why today you see, you see most of my mates who they still call me Christo Lasso, 
Because we know what we <laughs> I see. Now I know where you get it from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was also a member of the Student Representative Council in those days. Lasso was very notorious in those days. If you, if you follow the history of Lasso in the 80s, 90s, we were very notorious. Any little thing would block the uh, Badagres Reservoir and nothing happened. Yes. So, but we were very tactical about it. That was one. Two, we also have a very concerted and very solid. Uh, NANS, National Union uh, 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 NANS, that was very proactive. Uh, we didn't have um, what we call a mercenary as we have them now in NANS. When you see today, the president of NANS, uh, I think he should be he should be going to his 40s. And uh, I was hearing him the other day, he was a postgraduate, he's a postgraduate student of one of the universities. Then you can see, if you also see how he marched, you must have seen the process through which he marched. That at a point, people felt that it's just a government street. The NAS that we used to know when we were in school is not the NAS we know now. And that is why nobody's taking them serious. You can see the number of students that turned out for that rally in Abuja. I don't think they were all, I don't think they were up to 100. In those days, if NAS is calling out um, a protest, Kofi, I'm telling you that the whole of Abuja will be shut down. We know what used to be. The whole of Abuja will be shut down. It's just what University of Abuja alone can shut down Abuja. You, that, that one university can shut down Abuja. And the government will feel it. But you see the pocket of the number of people that uh, went and So, but I feel that, yes, the question is that uh, you were talking about they should be included in, uh, in the negotiation. I, I don't have any problem with that. I will tell you for free also that during our days, I remember that during the days of our protest, it, was, it got to a point where the governor of Lagos State, then Raji Rasaki, had to also invite um, so our, some, of our, some of our students' union leaders to be part of the negotiation, and at the end of it, all, some of those things were resolved. I don't have any problem with NANS um, being part of the negotiation team, but the problem is that NANS needs to get his ass together. He has to win the confidence of the students. He needs to win the confidence of the people that they are leading. This is a, 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 a strike that's becoming so many. But who will you blame? I wouldn't blame us. I will always blame the federal government because you sign an agreement. If you know you are not going to be, you are not going to fit that uh, agreement. Why do you sign it with ASU? And you continue to ask yourself, why do you sign this agreement periodically with ASU and you fail to deal with? So, um, any a, a, any kind of um, action that um, the students want to take, be able to bring to the fore, the government to be able to realize that um, they need to do something about this strike. Then the government. But the issue of now bringing in SARS, we feel like I think that's just very primary and very childish. I don't think that's to come well, up. Well, well, be much, much, yeah. yeah, I think that yeah, I think they can be more um, proactive in their actions and the way they go about uh, the protest without necessarily bringing all this issue of SARS and you don't need to take government yeah. money. You, 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 you need to ask you, you need to ask also where we're, we're now and during the SARS protests and what have they said. Um, following, you know, the uh, documented massacre on Nigerian youth, but um, I, 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 I'm raising my eyebrow at that demand uh, to be part of the negotiating um, uh, process. Uh, you went all the way to the the minister to tell him that a strike must be called off when he's not the one that called a strike in the first place. That is means you don't know what you're doing. Secondly, you now no. say he should include you in the negotiating process. The motives for asking to be included should be questioned. No, that's no, I, I don't, you don't need to question that. What is the university all about? It's not about lecturers. The university is about the students. Without the student, there will be no lecturer. There will be no ask. That you should get that. You should also understand that. So uh, they should be part of the negotiation. When two elephants fight, then the, the, is the grass that suffers. It's the student that suffers, not us. But know, it, 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 Christian, Wait, is, is it is it the federal the government who land. who would who would end the strike while negotiations continue? Do they have the power to do that? Shouldn't they be passing that message to uh, ASU rather than to the federal no, government? No, saying no, no. it's a it's a, suggest, it's a suggestion. It's right. a suggestion. Okay. Okay. It, 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 it's, it, when you go to negotiation, you you go with open arms. Anything up. Uh, where I was going to is is that um, Kofi, why ASU is on strike? Do you know that their salaries have been paid? Their salaries have been paid. But most of those students that you see protesting, most of them, close to about 70 to 80 percent number of students don't live in campuses. Most of those students are living in rented apartments. Yeah. They will pay for those apartments. Have you forgotten? That they will pay for those apartments. Whether they are there or not, they must pay for those apartments. Some of them have paid school fees for one session. That one session has been eroded, and that's it. And they pay. They have to pay again. So what I'm saying is that, so you cannot say they are not part. They should be part of the negotiation team. I, I believe and I should believe that they should be part of the negotiation team 
They are the students. They are the ones wearing the shoe. Kofi, you and I have graduated. We don't know what is happening. <laughs> but I, I can also tell you that what you don't know is that I'm Chris, this, I'm Chris, no one do. You, yes. I, I have to come in here now. But just before we move away from this conversation, I mean, and look at another headline on the dailies this morning. We also need to understand, I mean, I like the fact that you have mentioned, you have mentioned, and which is the fact, that the reason why the strike is lingering is because one party has refused to agree to the terms of, you know, an agreement, a contract. You can't, you know, there's always this strict balance that says agreement is an agreement. The question is, why would you get into a contract and refuse to respect it? It is, it is, it is so much lawlessness, and I, I, I lack. I mean, I'm in lack of, I'm lacking words right now to describe how we constantly do not respect it. And here we say that education is it, and we constantly, if education is the bedrock of every nation, then why do we constantly have to experience all of this strike? What, what does, where does this leave us as a country? So uh, let, let's. Let me just uh, end on this. Uh, I just wanted to uh, tell Kofi, in case Kofi doesn't know. Kofi, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an undergraduate as well. In as much as I left university in 1990, that's over 30 years ago, I'm currently a 500 level law student. So uh, when I'm talking, so I'm talking you, you're, you're students, affected. So you're <laughs> <laughs> you an intelligent displaced person of sorts. <laughs> Well, exactly. all, all, all so I can I'm say is that. So they should allow us to be part of the negotiation. <laughs> no all problem, I... no problem. I don't problem. <laughs> all I can, all I can say is Aluta continua. <laughs> so, so exactly. Chris, uh, let's also look at this one. It has to do with you know the elections, 2023. Now, Einek is saying it's okay's uh, 18 parties for that 2023 election. It therefore means that. Um, if you have the ideology of having a thought force, I mean, we've been hearing this conversation about thought force, there's no possibility of this thought force coming together as a political party. Is a no? Well, from what I think I'll say, it's probably that um, they might not be able to register another political party. What the thought force can do is to fuse themselves into one of the existing political parties and from there, um, galvanize their members. But uh, let me say this, 18 parties is even too many for me. Too many. 18 parties, too many. And you ask yourself, at the end of it all, what comes out? Most of them will not even present presidential candidates. Or they, they, or no, they will not present candidates in the, for the House of Assembly, State House of Assembly, National Assembly, and the rest of it. Only see, you see somebody wake up one day and say, I'm the presidential candidate of this social party. And when you start getting about two weeks to election, you quickly go and say, oh, I endorse this other uh, person, and they collect their cash and move away. The way it is structured, the best, I have always believed that the best thing for us in Nigeria, that is my personal opinion, is a two-party system. Sincerely. Not that when I say two-party system, a very, very, you saw what happened during the NS, NRC and STB, SDP days. You saw the kind of election that we had. But as a Democrat, I want to give room for as many political parties as possible for people. Based. But you continue to see that it is the only the PDP and the APC that are always dominating the, the political space. Why don't most of these political parties, for the sake of whatever it is worth, to be able to come together and fuse together and become that thought force that Messi is talking about? If we have 18 political parties being, um, uh, um, uh, what's it, uh, being allowed to take part in 2020, why don't the 60 remaining parties come together and come out with a candidate? That would be a better and bigger thought force. And say, Nigeria, we have come out. This is the alternative to APC. This is the alternative to PD. We have tried PDP, they failed. We've tried APC, they failed. why don't you try it? That is the way I think they should be able to go about this. But the way it is structured now, you still realize that most of the political parties are just existing in names and nothing. Apart from APC, PDP, APGA, and which other one? I think those are just the three. I don't see any other, <laughs> any other political party making any headway. All again. right. All right. Th th thank you very much. A very interesting analysis and con um, contributions from you um, of uh, papers this morning. Chris Kende Wandu is a chartered mediator, conciliator. He's a Nigerian student, um, former student union leader as well. Um, uh, Chris, I, I was also a uh, leader in the faculty departmental level, so I think we have something in common. Wow. Yes, yes, we have something in common. <laughs> so all, all I can say is Aluta continua. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Do have a nice day ahead. You too. You too.
Well, uh, it's been an amazing time, uh, Chris Wendu. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. We look forward to having more of you right here. We will let you know what happened today in history being the very first day in the month of March. When we return, we head straight to our first major conversation. The continuous, uh, I mean, the fact that we have the queues still prolonged and the fact that maybe or maybe not, the fear of scarcity might just be uh, something that would live with us for a very long time. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.